There may be stories with more intertwined family connections like Naruto or Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, but Jujutsu Kaisen has certainly added to its family drama in recent chapters. And to no one's surprise, it involves our MC Yuji Itadori. So considering the new information, it might be high time to look at who exactly is related to him and how they're connected. We'll even touch on some unexpected distant relatives to tie it all up nicely. Let's start from the most obvious members and move towards the more obscure, including characters who aren't even directly related to Yuji. You know the one. The first family member we meet is Wasuke Itadori, Yuji's grandfather. From what we've seen, he was close to him his entire life and raised him alone during Yuji's later years. Wasuke also tried to protect Jin, his son, from being fooled and eventually killed, but his words were ignored. From way back when Yuji was a baby, he knew there was something wrong with Jin's wife and her change in appearance. Sadly, before Yuji even consumed his first Sukuna finger, Wasuke passed away in his bed after giving life advice. I can only imagine how upset he would be to see everything his grandson had to go through. All signs point to Wasuke being a regular human who probably couldn't see curses or use cursed energy, but he seemed to have a keen intuition anyway. And on the other hand, he maybe could have been a sorcerer as well and knew more than what we thought, but I don't think Gege will ever really reveal that, to be honest. Next, we have Yuji's father, Jin. He seemed like a peaceful and loving man who appreciated his family. We didn't get too much of him, but we find out he's willing to go against his father's wishes and stay with Kaori. Despite the strange things that happened to her, he eventually left the picture somehow, seeing as Yuji only had his grandfather left at the beginning of the story. Normally, it would be clear that Kenjaku just killed him off and then swapped bodies, but in this case, it's left kind of open. Also, there's no way to know if he had anything to do with Jujitsu while he was around. But one thing we do know is that Jin was someone special. Recently, he's been revealed as Sukuna's twin that had died long ago. Like many years later, he reincarnated as a human and was intentionally used to produce the ideal vessel for Sukuna. Considering that twins share most, if not all, of their genes, there was no way Yuji's body would reject him. That whole thing about one in a million surviving after consuming a cursed object as powerful as the fingers. But first guys, Hofsko is doing a huge giveaway where you can win one of their Xander Max 10 inch folding electric scooters for free by simply just following Hofsko on Facebook and Instagram, as well as joining their official Hofsko Facebook group. That's it. That's literally all you need to do to be entered to win a free Xander Max 10 inch folding electric scooter. The giveaway is running from today, June 12th to June 30th. I'll have the links in the description. Thanks guys. It would be cool to find out if he's still alive somewhere and maybe get his help to fend off his twin. But anyway, this is where things start going off the rails for Yuji's family tree. Yuji's original mother's name was Kaori, and she had her own curse technique related to anti-gravity. We find this out through Kenjaku using it long after she's dead, because she died off screen and likely through unnatural means. It's also hard to say whether she used her curse technique or just lived a normal life. As a reminder, besides stealing Kaori, Kamo, and Geto's curse techniques from their bodies, he also has his own, which allows him to jump to different bodies in the first place. One thing that's hard to refute is that Kenjaku likely killed Kaori, then took over her body and mixed his blood with Jin to ensure the perfect spot for the King of Curses to exist. I can't say for sure that Kenjaku gave birth to Yuji because that wasn't what he did in the past to create his other children, but we at least know that he took her body so that he could use her curse technique and mix his blood into Yuji's genes. But to be honest, I really wouldn't be surprised if Kenjaku did literally give birth to Yuji. Uh, also, uh, speaking of that, Momjaku apparently also sealed a finger within Yuji's body as a newborn so that he'd be more tolerant of Sukuna's arrival. So yeah, I guess we could consider Kenjaku as Yuji's mother too. Even though he's more like a deadbeat dad who has kids all over the place, but doesn't take care of them when they call him out and leaves them with a bunch of trauma and self-esteem issues. Or tries to kill them. And honestly, what's the point of having Kenjaku's blood mixed in with Yuji's? He's won Kaori's technique and he got it. He wanted Sukuna's twin to have a child to be used as a vessel, so he did it. So how does his DNA add anything to Yuji? 
Maybe it's just for his ego or a way of leaving his mark on him. Whatever the case, they're related. And it would be even funnier if he did push out a baby Yuji just to guarantee his plans would be successful. He seems like that level of meticulous. But I bet you think it can't get any worse than that, right? Well, this leads us to the malevolent shrine user himself, Sukuna. Now that we know Jin was his brother, a twin no less, there's no denying that Yuji's related to Sukuna. In normal terms, that makes Sukuna his sadistic, unhinged uncle Suk. On the other hand, if we take into consideration the way the series defines twins as one person, then it gives us another option. In case you don't remember, the reason Maki had no cursed energy and her sister had barely enough to make her bullets was because their bodies shared what was supposed to be one person's curse technique. So once Mai passed away, she became both a weapon and an awakening for Maki's true form. In Sukuna's case, he had consumed his twin at birth, removing that weakness altogether. And if they represent one person with you Yuji being from their genes directly, couldn't that make Yuji closer than a nephew to Sukuna? Something more like an offspring, almost. Well, it's just a technicality. Let's just stick with Sukuna being his uncle for now. The disgraced one's curse technique is beyond words, involving shrines, slashing, and divine flames, which is pretty misleading since there's nothing divine about the man. His true form is a perfect representation of the twin he munched on at birth, giving him four arms and two faces, and zero heart to speak of. By the way, Sukuna was only able to survive after death because Kenjaku helped him turn his remains into cursed objects that couldn't be destroyed, all because the the ancient sorcerer wanted Sukuna to participate in the future culling game. So let's recap. Mom Jaku made a deal with Yuji's uncle so that they could work together a thousand years in the future and cause chaos. Sukuna has only recently put the pieces together of his connection to Yuji, not that it changes anything for him anyway. But going further, Yuji grew up as an only child within his household. At least until Gege decides to have another family member come out of the woodwork. But the point is that his core family only had him as a child of loving parents. That's still true, but what's also true is that a third parent snuck his way in. Because of that, Yuji actually had quite a few seriously strong half-siblings floating around. Well, inside some test tubes behind Tengen's barrier and hidden in the bowels of the Star Corridor. The first two Yuji come across through a mission are Esso and Kechizu, but it doesn't feel like a coincidence when the two death paintings are sent to fetch a Sukuna finger and end up confronting their brother. And let's not overlook the fact that their mutual mad scientist of a parent is the one who brought them together in this unfortunate way. At this point, Kenjaku has Geto's body, so I'm certain the death paintings wouldn't have listened to him if they knew who was ordering them around. But this brings up another question. Did Kenjaku mean for the death paintings to be eliminated by Sukuna's vessel, since he basically created Yuji solely for that purpose from birth. You want to talk about family drama, well we're in the thick of it now. Esso uses a technique called Wing King, and there's wings that sprout from the eerie face on his back. Kechizu has his own move, Decay, that sprouts a flower pattern on his opponents and makes them decompose. But he and Kechizu share a technique named Rot, which makes their blood more poisonous, but also corrosive in nature. This reflects their existence as aborted entities that are like half corpses. After spending literal decades in storage, Yuji's siblings are freed, only to be killed within days of being incarnated. The worst part is that Esso was trying to leave and not fight them for the errand that he was on. That is, until Yuji saw his back that he's extremely insecure about, seeing as he's part curse and part human. Again, this just brings up the sad truth that Yuji's half-brother tried to kill him because he didn't want his back to be seen. Kenjizu doesn't play much of a role in Yuji's life since he was facing Nobara instead, and he's the first to go down. That's what leads us to the third sibling, and the oldest and most developed of them, Choso. While he was minding his own business elsewhere, he felt his brother's deaths and made it his goal to track down the people responsible. And surprise, surprise, Yuji, his half-brother, was one of them. But seeing as he was manipulated by Mom Jaku, or dead Jaku, Choso didn't know better and nearly ended Jujutsu Kaisen early. By that, I mean Yuji was moments away from expiring again. That's when his blood manipulation comes in handy and gives Choso an internal notification that someone related to him by blood is nearing death. And since the other six cursed wombs were still in jars with Esso and Kechizu already dead, it had to be Yuji. Plus, you know, there was all this blood spilled around the bathroom that was mixing with Choso's own. Speaking of his technique, unlike his siblings that had more curse-like techniques, blood manipulation is a highly coveted specialty within the Kamo clan. It's also fitting that the more human-looking cursed womb would get it. 
Maybe each child after him lost more of their humanity as the experiments went on. Thanks, Kenjaku. Anyway, after a mental breakdown and much soul-searching, Choso realizes the connection has to be real, especially since that loser within the Stitches is the one that brought them all together. But before that, let's take a small detour to talk about the other death painting wounds. The six are named Noronso, Shooso, Tanso, Shanso, Kotsuso, and Shoso. Despite never being incarnated and having active roles in the story, they still help Yuji in their own way. And the fact that Choso was willing to forgive Yuji for the killings as well as help him survive the rest of his journey really shows how good of a sibling he was. Now that we've gone through everyone who led to Yuji's creation, we might as well talk about him a bit, right? Well, he was born in 2003 and is somewhere close to 16 years old currently. Before dealing with the finger at his high school, he couldn't see or sense curses. He also had no cursed energy to use, but he was super fast and too strong for a regular human. After unknowingly becoming a vessel for his uncle, he started to experience changes. He could see curses Curses, he could use cursed energy, but still no technique. He learned how to control it more with time, and then his uncle killed him by ripping his heart out. And then he brought him back after making a deal. Just wait, it gets worse. A lot happened, and then Yuji went to help Megumi to keep his stepsister safe from a curse. But that unexpectedly involved killing two of Yuji's own half-siblings. He felt really bad about that, especially seeing them cry for each other. And maybe that's why it hit him so hard to realize that they weren't purely curses and wouldn't just disappear. Then again, Yuji's just a genuinely compassionate guy, so he would have mourned even a stranger. Later, a wild roller coaster of events happened in Shibuya, getting Yuji mixed up with his oldest half sibling, Choso. He almost dies again, only to be spared when Choso's curse technique warns him of the mistake. Then his uncle takes over his body, massacres a bunch of people, and drops him off at ground zero, so he can be even more traumatized. Keep in mind, Sukuna just hates him because of how easily he can switch him out. He had no idea Yuji was related to him or that he's his deceased twin son. After losing some people, Yuji at least gains Choso an ally, even willing to take on their heartless parent, Kenjaku. This means nothing to Yuji since he was too young when his parents were out of his life. After a small time skip, Yuji starts to embrace that Choso's his older brother. They work well together and Choso can tell him a lot about dad Jaku, but his uncle is still an actual demon and switches from his body to Megumi's to access the Ten Shadows. So now Yuji has to fight his uncle who's using a close friend's body, while trying not to kill him so that Megumi's can survive. Who cares about his uncle at this point, right? Yuji goes through some training with his reliable brother Choso, and then eats the rest of their siblings so that he can finally have a curse technique of his own. Yeah, it's messed up, but at least they're not in storage anymore. And it only turns into more of a tragedy when Yuji loses his final sibling that we know of. And it's at the hands of a sadistic Uncle Suk again. Well, more specifically, Choso was protecting Yuji from dying by sacrificing himself. But let's leave the Shakespearean levels of depression behind for a bit. Yuji may not have any close relatives left around thanks to his other family members, but he's still got a few characters that he can share the trauma with. Nor Toshikamo is the first one that comes to mind. No, I'm not talking about his history's most evil sorcerer from the Kamo clan. I mean the young guy Kamo who was supposed to take over the clan before Kenjaku kicked him out of it. The reason he should be considered a distant, very distant relative of Yuji's is because of Kenjaku's involvement in the bloodline. It may be highly diluted, but if Kenjaku had any other experimental children and they led to the descendants of the clan, then Noritoshi should be slightly connected to Yuji. Think of it as the same type of relation that Gojo and Akotsu have because they share the common ancestor of Michizani Sugawara. With that in mind, that should include whoever's left of the Kamo clan, probably. Not that any of them seem interested interested in anything outside of the big three families. And if we go even deeper, and this is a major stretch, the curse who was used to create the nine death wound paintings could also be a part of Yuji's distant family. But then again, it's probably dead after 150 plus years, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Since we're going that far into Yuji's bloodline, we might as well include characters who aren't related to him, but still very much connected to him in their own ways. At first, the most obvious is Aoi Toto. Considering that he helped Yuji to better himself after his uncle managed to kill him, Toto's a better relative for him than most. Also, he beat the crap out of Yuji when he first met him, just like Choso, so they have that in common. But the way that Choso got Yuji through some tough times, and so did Toto, until he lost his curse technique. And of course, we have to include that suspicious flashback to non-existent memories that convinced Toto that they were related. That still hasn't really been explained. It could have been a gag 
moment, I suppose. It created so much confusion for the fans of the series, especially since we got a similar fake memory for Choso a few arcs later. Gege says he didn't mean for that to happen, but maybe he's lying? <laughs> what if Toto is actually related to Yuji somehow? Well, whatever the case, it's good news that he's back with a robotic arm to clap, because Yuji needs someone to fill that void that Choso's left. And who better to do it than his Buraza? And the fact that his curse technique involves swapping and switching places really drives the point home of him filling in for Choso's spot that's now vacant. This next character, however, is purely speculation, but could be an interesting addition to Yuji's tree of dead relatives. And that's Hanakurusu and the Hien sorcerer Angel. I came across a theory that she might be related to our MC, and like you, immediately wanted to dismiss it, but hear me out. The idea is that, like Yuji, Hana can house another soul perfectly without losing herself or being controlled by them. Yeah, it's not the same as staving off the King of Curses, known for his brutality and power, but still. The fact that Hana is the only other character we've seen be able to have conversations with the other soul inside of her and also live in relative harmony does feel like she could have a connection to Yuji. Then again, Yuji was painstakingly crafted to become the perfect receptacle to fit his murderous uncle, while Hana just so happened to connect with Angel in her righteous mission. But it's also wild that Angel's goal is to hunt down Sukuna, the incarnated sorcerer who basically represents the complete opposite of her. So in that way, it might just be Gege's way for us to see how Sukuna's relationship with Yuji could have been if he was kind of a, an understanding sorcerer instead. But yeah, that's everything for Yuji's family tree, at least for now but I think this is going to be it, considering we are approaching the end of the series. If you liked the video, please give it a like, and if you're looking forward to more Jujutsu Kaisen content like this, please subscribe as well. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.